Clustering is an unsupervised machine learning technique used to group similar data together. In this tutorial, I'll explain how you can use the k-means approach to solve the customer segmentation problem. These are the five main steps involved in k-means clustering. The algorithm starts by specifying the k-means, the number of clusters. Then it randomly initializes the cluster centers, also called centroids. And at this point, it assigned each data point to the closest cluster center. Then with that new data set, it recomputes the cluster centers by taking the mean of all the data in that specific cluster. And finally, it repeats the step three and four until the cluster assignment stop changing or also the maximum iteration is reached. Now that you have a better understanding of what to expect, let's get into the technical implementation. The first step is to load the library and the data. Um, the data that we'll be using is the mall customer data set also available on Kaggle. And these are the three main libraries, Pandas to read the data set, Matplotly to perform some um, data visualizations and k-means um, class to perform the k-means clustering. And here what we do is to have a look at the first five observations in the data set. And as you can see, we have um, five main columns, the customer ID, genre, age, annual income, and the spending score. This score is like a kind of pattern to identify how the customer uh, spends on the money and at the mall. Before performing the Cayman clustering, we have to check the missing values in the data set. And this can be done using the is null function and we take the sum to identify how many missing value we have for each column. And as you can see, we have zero missing value in all the data sets. And let's move with some data visualization. The goal of a data visualization is to have an idea of the number of clusters that we might find in the data set. Let's start by looking at the relationship between customer's age and the spending score. And this scatter plot shows this uh, output and we can see that it looks like we have two types of group, this one and that one. From the age and annual income, there is no specific pattern that we can identify. What about the third? The third one is the spending score and the annual income. And from the spending score and the annual income, we can see that, you know, it looks like we have like five different clusters, one, two, three, four, and the one in the middle. From different visualizations, we have different types of um, hypotheses in terms of clusters. But intuitively, we cannot, unfortunately, find um, the number of clusters this way. This is where the k clustering can help us identify the optimal number of clusters to use. Next, let's choose the relevant columns to be used in the clustering. In this scenario, we'll be using only the numerical columns, which are age, annual income, and spending score. We totally exclude the gender uh, column. Cumin clustering is sensitive to the scale of the data and also the measurement being used. In this scenario, for instance, we cannot compare age and the annual income because they are in different scales. And if we try to use, um, to apply the cumin clustering in such data sets, it might not perform very well. So it's a better practice to standardize our data sets to make them in the same scale. That's what we are going to perform in this data transformation. To do that, we use the scikit-learn tender scalar on class. So this tender scalar is going first to initialize the tender scalar and this scalar is going to be fit on the customer data set and after fitting on the customer data set, then we perform the final scaling, which is going to scale the data between negative one and one. For instance, this is one way of performing the scaling. 
another one can be also to normalize the data sets between zero and one either way can work but the most important thing is to um, transform your data to make them all in the same unit a clustering method will not be relevant if we fail to identify the proper number of clusters. Multiple techniques exist in the literature and in this example we'll be using the elbow method. This is a heuristic method. It is widely used to determine the optimal number of clusters. And the implementation is given in these two functions. So the first function called find burst clusters. This first function takes two parameters, the data frame and the maximum number of clusters that we want. So first of all, what we do is to initialize two variables. The first one is the cluster centers and the second one is the K value. The reason why we're doing this is we want at the end to plot the relationship between the cluster centers and the number of k values or the number of clusters that we have computed in this analysis. This is the follow that goes through like the number of clusters from one to the maximum number of clusters. We compute the cluster means and also fit the cluster model. And after we have the cluster model, then we save the inertia of that cluster into the cluster centers and also we save the underlying number of cluster of that model and at the end of the process we return the cluster center and the cluster values these are the two lists that we return and once we have those values then we can plot the relationship between the cluster centers and the number of clusters and in this um, scenario what I have done here is to choose the maximum number of cluster to be 12 and I provide the scaled data sets here be careful not to use the first um, data frame but the scaled data set that we have um, previously computed and here is the final plot so from this plot you can see that the inertia of the cluster decreases as the number of cluster increases so this is because we are losing you know cluster information as we increase the number of cluster this means that the more cluster we have the more noise we are going to create so it will be better to cut the number of clusters somewhere in order to get that optimal number of cluster and from the plot you can see that you know from that point from cluster number at one to two you know we have a very large inertia and the same goes from two to three the number of inertia from two to three is lower from you know two to three to one to two and from five you can see that the level here if you draw a horizontal line from six and five the gap between those two would be very small compared to you know from that level from five to four and at this point it might be better to cut the number of cluster at this level we can cut this here, consider 4 at the optimal number of cluster, but it might be also better to cut at 5 to be the number, the optimal number of cluster con to consider. Now that we have the optimal number of cluster, the final step is to create um, the corresponding k means model. Here we create k means model by calling the k means class and specifying the number of cluster which is five this is the optimal number of cluster that we have identified here using the elbow method and the final step is to fit the model on the scale data set and here we have the model and once we have the model now what we do is to create a new column in the original data set called um, cluster and that cluster um, is going to store the cluster label. After we have trained the um, k-means model, 
we can get the unique clusters by calling the dot labels attribute and we save that into the cluster um, column in the data set and looking at the customers data data frame we can see that new column that has been created and we can observe that um, the first second third and fourth um, observations are all from the same cluster the third observation is from the third the cluster um, with the id number three here now what we can do is to plot the clusters on the original data set and this is done using the scatter plots along with the new cluster column that we have created here and here is the final plot so from the final plot we can see that we have exactly five clusters the first one here the second one here and here and the final one in the middle looks like there is a kind of overlap between the cluster in the center and that one in here and so maybe like four could be the better um cluster number at this level we'll have one two three and four clusters here but going with five clusters so how do we interpret those clusters we have plot the annual income and the spending score we notice that the first group of customers have with the higher annual income have a very low spending score so what we can do here is to perform a kind of marketing campaign in order to incite those customers to spend more you know in by maybe advertising new products and also we have here different type of customers with a very high spending score but very low annual income those customers spend tend to spend a lot of money but they don't have um, you know a very high spending score on um, the very high annual income and here also is the kind of the right balance between those we with um, a high annual income and higher spending score the more money they make the higher uh, spending they can perform so this is what we can do with Cayman's clustering and also the clustering in general if you like this video give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section if there are some new topics that you want me to cover in my uh, future videos thank you for watching and bye bye